Hey, everybody. I'm here with Jarrett Thomas. Um, we've been talking just before here, so we're going to have a blast in this podcast. Um, Jarrett is Senior Ex Enterprise Account Manager for Hootsuite. Yeah. Jarrett, do you want to tell our audience who's tuning in to hear this and hear us tear up the world about what you do at Hootsuite? Yep, yep, absolutely. So, hey, everybody, I'm Jared Thomas. Um, as Dean said, I'm a senior account manager at Hootsuite. And shout out to everybody at Hootsuite. Love you guys. So what I do specifically is I work with our mid-tier and top-tier clients, and I help them strategize and better utilize the platform. So I've got 10 years experience in the marketing space. I've sold everything from like CPC, display. I've done programmatic. I've been on the SEO side, agency side, brand side. I've been all around the block in my career. And that's been Super helpful for me because I know a lot about a different, a lot of different facets of marketing, and I'm able to execute on it, which also helps our clients connect the dots outside the platform, which helps them be more effective in it. Awesome, and you have a little title, just a little title. You've done two million dollars worth of business without a cold, cold email whatsoever, right? Not at all. That was at, um, I was working at the agency. I, I'll tell the story real quick. So I was working at an agency called I Pull Rank. Um, it was a small black owned agency, 15 people strong. I was in a very weird place in my career. And I was asking, you know, how we get our leads. So the first conversation with the founder, I'm like, what's going on? How do we get the leads? I'm expected to go after enterprise accounts, Nike, Ubers of the world. And I'm like, holy crap. Like how, first of all, how the hell am I going to do this? Right. I'm cool with the email. Yeah. But if you want me to go out and get a go after Uber and Nike, we need some sort of brand awareness. And it can't be just, you know, you're a thought leader in the space. So how are we going to create better communication and better relationships with them? Right. So when I asked him this, he, he showed me his Twitter. He had 50,000 followers on Twitter. And mm -hmm. then most of our business was coming through referral business. So mm -hmm. once I put those two dots together, you know, clearly it's not outbound messaging that's working effectively for us. So what if I was to create content, double down on that, show people what our expertise is, build up the trust, credibility in the space and have our clients come to us. Right. So we yeah. can, you know, cut the sales cycle and have, you know, create better relationships, so on and so forth. So when I did that first week, man, I'm like, look, I'm not doing no emails. I'm not doing that. I doubled down. I would go with me and my partner, Lee Gall, who was also a salesperson. We would go downstairs every morning, we get a coffee, and I just say, spit a topic. Don't care what it is. If it's family, parenting, SEO, content strategy, whatever it is, no editing, no anything. We just put it on LinkedIn. And I, and for context, I didn't know LinkedIn was what yeah. it was. I thought it was like everybody else. I was just using it to, to show webinars and blogs and other boring company content. The, the, the propaganda. Yeah, you know the the machine. I was I was a, I was a droid in the machine, brother. So um, didn't know the visibility was going to be crazy. But three months into that, um, I would we would go get a chicken parm for lunch, man, and people would stop us and be like, "Hey, holy crap, that's Jared and Lee from LinkedIn. I watch your shit all the time." And I'm like, "Whoa, never had that in my life." <laughs> I was hooked. I, I had end up getting a, a post with twenty thousand views that was picked up by the LinkedIn editors, and it was through the roof. I was gone. You couldn't tell me anything. So I was like there. And then and shortly around that time, three months in, I was able to close my biggest deal, 450000 um, straight That's through the platform and through the relationships. And then from there, the pandemic happened. You know, then, then Zoom info couldn't keep up with the, the demand of people losing jobs, leaving jobs, the great yeah. resonance and all that stuff. So we couldn't send emails anyway. So I had SDRs working in the background. But me personally, I was not sending a email and those weren't effective. So, yeah. so and, and the thing is, if you're trying to land these big deals, yep. why would you like, I mean, most people, uh, and we'll stay on LinkedIn in a minute, but I just want to yeah. kind of pick on this cold email thing. Yeah. You're trying to land a £450,000 deal or $450,000 deal. Uh -huh. But some people kind of like lose their brain and go, yeah, I'm going to set up an email sequence. And uh -huh. it's like, this is a $450,000 deal. And you're going to put it in the hands of templates. It, it, it is, oh my goodness, you hit the nail on the head. And that's the problem. But that's what the way we we're taught in sales, right? That's how traditionally we were taught in sales. It's a numbers game, right? Yeah. The way I look at it differently, right? And how I always looked at it, but I just had to do my job is when I send these thousand emails, I might get one meeting. Out that one meeting, this person isn't ready to buy. He just knows that I email, he might feel sympathetic, empathetic to me, whatever the case may yeah. be. It took time. And then when you get on the phone call, you don't want to tell me your issues. You're just like, what do you have for me? Right. So I lose the sales leverage and it's not a good conversation. Nobody has fun. They're not having fun. I'm not having fun. And then when I send you the emails that don't respond, it's not the company's name. It's an email from Jared Thomas. 
Mm-hmm. So how is that impacting my personal brand as well as yeah. the company? Because they're not saying, oh, that was a holy, that was a terrible email from Hootsuite. No, they're saying that's a terrible email from Jared. Yeah. I didn't want that. So, and that's when I just kind of was like, look, you know, the way I was able to build that $450,000 deal is because I knew and worked with the person prior and they had seen me being more active. Yeah. You know what I mean? And from there, yeah. Everybody thinks like, we're going to make this one post and it's going to blow up and change the world. And (laughs) I would argue, I know you had that post that got featured by the LinkedIn editors, but how many times did the LinkedIn editors check you out? and see stuff from you that was interesting. And then they went, do you know what? This is solid. We're going to put this out. That's the that's That's kind of like dark social, right? Because you don't know who your content is affecting. And that's, yeah. what, the, that's what the beauty of it is, right? So yeah. it's a long game. So anybody listening, right? And then you want to start your content strategy and personal branding. It didn't click for me until seven, eight months, maybe, right? I got the big deal in the first three months. But when I started getting inbound leads and whereas like I could kind of track it like clockwork was around that eight month, to a year period, right? So, because I didn't build trust enough, I didn't build equity in the network. I was engaging with other mm-hmm. people, and it got to a point where if I post something, I knew I had twenty-five to fifty people that are actually my friends that I just met. They're going to support me, and through that, mm-hmm. I get more visibility in the network. And my line is feeds equals leads, right? Yeah. So I don't do any pods. I don't do any paid. I don't do any of that. Everything I've done on the platform to date has been organic and native. And. You, you make a good point there. You're building a crowd of people who buy into you and then they buy into Hootsuite. Exactly. Because the, the, the thing is, how do I make myself different, right? First of all, I can't sell you if I don't know your problem, right? Yeah. So right there, I'm shooting in the dark, right? But if I can break the sales barrier down and get you to like me as a person, then you'll want to do business with me when the time is right. And I don't have to hawk you or stalk you for your business, right? So what I've seen after that, like was basically what the post that took off for me personally that got me sales was not the SEO, was doesn't the content strategy stuff. It was, hey, I worked at Starbucks. I was 22 years old. I was at La Pan Quotidian selling coffee and BBQ smelling like ribs. And then I had my first child. I can't make minimum wage anymore. So what the hell am I going to do? And I basically outlined what my process was, how I was on Indeed every night, how I was dealing with being a parent, and then how I got my first job into sales, which was a hospital call center. And they asked me to sell them a pencil like out of Wolf of Wall Street. And then like a week later, I met some digital ad place. And I'm like, holy shit, I I got my first break in the tech. And I was just confident, man. I felt like this was my, my way in. It's the first time I had salary, salary wages. And I'm like, man, this is my, this is my end. So they're going around the room. And they're saying, hey, I'm from Buffalo State, I'm from Yale, I'm from this. I'm Jared Thomas from the Bronx, from Evander Childs High School, and I'm going to be the top effing seller in here. <laughs> they laughed me out the room, Dean, laughed me out the room. Kid you not, true story. Six months later, I was doing $250,000, and I was the top performer for eight straight quarters. Whoa. Straight like that. And it was because I, I couldn't lose. I had the tenacity to say, man, this is my it. If not, I'm going back to BBQ smelling like ribs. Right? <laughs> so, so if we think about this, from the content point of view, your determination. I see a lot of people who wanted to do the whole content and build their, we call it, we call it become the expert in demand. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, position yourself that you've got answers for your audience and they look to you for the answers. Yeah. Yeah, That's kind of exactly what you did. Yeah. But most people go, yeah, I want that, but can I have it now? Yep. And they don't see it through. They go, that post didn't work. I'm over. It's over. Or no, no, it's it's quality versus quantity. I hate it when people say that. Oh, but, another word I hate, I hate value. Yeah. Value will kill people's posts and determination to post, right? What they need to understand is that value is subjective to the audience, right? You don't have to be this big thought leader, but let's say me and you, Dean, right? Let's say I post something like a, a medium rare steak on LinkedIn. I'm at a steakhouse. I'm with my family. This looks great. Let me share it to my audience. You may or other people may be thinking, why the hell are you sharing, sharing a steak on LinkedIn? This is business. But guess what? You might be at a steakhouse right now, Dean, and be like, shit, I love a medium rare too, man. That's insane. Where did you go? Uh, uh, where's the place? Do you need reservations? Whatever that conversation is, mm. that's a conversation starter. And that's what makes it not weird when you go into the DM. Yeah. So all you want is engagement so you can take that offline and just be a person. Don't be a seller. Yeah. yeah. I can't tell you enough how many times it was just like, man, I would love to get a beer with you. Or I would love to do this with you. Well, and then they just tell me. Here's the nuts thing, right? Yeah. Um, People just need to be aware of you, be able to relate to you. That's it. And believe you when you actually present your product. Exactly. Everything, you know, 
the credibility of the product or the service is actually built on the person. We've all had that scenario where sure. a great brand, pro, you know, a great company pitches us, but actually we don't like the salesperson. That's it. You, and we you just know. Go, no, thanks. So, so talk about this consistency piece because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I hate the quality versus quantity. Where, oh, no, no. I only want to put out stuff that's quality. I'm like, how do you know what's quality? That's like that's like that's like Netflix saying we're going to make the best show ever, and then telling people it's the best show ever, but nobody watches it. That's it. But that's the problem. We don't determine as the creators what's the best content ever. The audience does. So yeah. it goes back to that subjective mindset of, say, for instance, if I'm in SEO for for twenty, if I'm for for five years, and I'm talking about a keyword strategy, but if you've been doing it for twenty years, this is not thought provoking for you. But if I'm in the space and I just started, then maybe it will be. So you just have to create your content that you think that'd be valuable to others and just be authentic. Like I think there's, I have a podcast called More Than a Title. And the reason why I wanted to do it, right, is because I think there's more value in the stories and the lessons of what somebody has gone through in their career. Like I've spoken to CEOs that slept in their car for six months to get up enough funding so they can launch their, their, their business. That's the stories I want to hear. Yeah. How did you persevere through that shit? Because the keywords and that strategy isn't helpful. But then I really want to know how you over. I like to be inspired. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to do the other people, right? That's why I wear the hat. That's why I wear the hoodie. Because I want to show representation matters. And I want to show people that you can do whatever the hell you want to be. And the, yeah. the way you get to true satisfaction and happiness in your career is when you can be what you want and say what you want. And that's yeah. when creativity, that's when everything just happens. And that's when people gravitate to you. It's like a filter for people who are not like-minded. Nope. Nobody likes vanilla, right? Yeah. <laughs> Middle of the road appeals to nobody. You yep. in yourself and people will, I mean, think about it. If they're going to work with you, it's not just like, okay, I've done a sale. Maybe you, maybe you can, maybe you can be whatever you want. If you're just doing a sale and then going, there you go, it's done. But the reality is most of us are not doing that anymore. Most of us aren't selling that way. Sure. We're actually building relationships with people because we want to support them and we want a long relationship. So you can be a chameleon in the sale, but actually they'll find your real self later on. And if they don't like that, they're going to leave. So it makes sense to go, this is who I am. Love me or hate me. That's it. That's that's all it is, brother. Love me or hate me. And what I've seen for the most part has been love yeah. because people want to see that. So I share my son. I share my kids. We're on the jet ski. It gets 20,000 views. Right. I just surprised him for his birthday or he got accepted into a great high school. All of these things that say, hey, man, this guy's a good parent. This guy's a good dude. This guy is trustworthy because those are things that I really am. So why wouldn't I showcase that versus showcasing my product? They may glitch on you. They may F up on you. They may do those things. But I need you to trust me that if that does happen, you know, I got your back. Yeah. yeah. So this whole consistency piece, you did this for eight months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, before you really got it caught fire and you felt that this is something that will feed my pipeline. It'll, it'll keep me busy. It'll help me hit my numbers. Yeah. How did you keep yourself motivated on the days where it was like, you didn't have the great posts. How did you, how did you get through those bits when you think, I don't know what to post and I don't know what to do next? Yep. You just, I just remind myself it's only LinkedIn. It's only LinkedIn, man. Like who gives a damn, right? It's just LinkedIn. If I, if I, if I get a post that gets 500 likes or 50,000 likes, it does not matter. I'm still going to be the same person. And the best part of it is I get to shoot tomorrow or I might get to shoot again later this the, the evening, right? I posted at one o'clock, got five likes, no worries. I got something for you at six, you know, <laughs> it just is what it is, man. And you just build up that equity. So I don't care about, I don't care about vanity metrics, but mm -hmm. I care about the relationships. I judge my success on how many people I've impacted in any given week. Yeah. That's, that's what you really should look at, you know, for any sellers out there. So if somebody's, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to try and uh, get you to say something that hopefully we'll agree on. Okay. Or, or I'll ask you something that hopefully we'll agree on. Okay. You talked about like, you share a lot of personal stuff. Some people would say, this is not Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hear it. But also some of the stuff that people put out, do you not find it's like they're talking to themselves? Like they're it, posting, they're posting stuff. You said it earlier about 
uh, you were in SEO or, or account strategy for 20 years and you were sharing content about that. And somebody who else has been doing it for 20 years may not find it interesting. Do you not think it could be the other way around as well? You could be trying to talk to somebody who's not as far down as you, but you're talking up here. Yeah. Now, to be honest with you, I talk to whoever I feel would it be valuable for. Really, it's for me. I look at LinkedIn like my personal journey. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My, my personal diary. So if I might have had a cold call or a good call that day, I might have heard some interesting stuff. I'm going to throw that in a post. I yeah. might have talked to a cab driver who was an inventor and he has seven different patents, but he's driving an Uber. Right. Like these are the people that I interact with. Right. So for me, and people say, hey, this is not Facebook and this is not all that. I would love to challenge you to say, put your stats against mine. Because the people that I've been able to interact with, I've interacted with the CEO of Revolt TV, the CEO of Rap Snacks, the CEO of 16 Handles, Solomon Choi. I've gotten shout outs from Van Jones, the global uh, social media manager at Spotify. I had the CEO of Stars Entertainment like one of my posts that had a medium rare steak. So <laughs> would you want that? Or do you want the same OBS or people in your organization just liking your post telling you you had a good job? Or do you want to really form valuable relationships? I I'm going to go this way every time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So how do you, how do you balance the personal and the credibility piece of the product? Do you think they, they conflict in any way or not? No. Cause you know what I do? I don't lead with product ever. Mm-hmm. Cause my thing is if I create good content and you like who I am, you're going to see senior account manager at Hootsuite, you know, on my profile. And then you're going to yeah. go to my profile, see the big Hootsuite banner. And if you really, really give a damn about what I'm doing, you're going to go to Hootsuite to see what we're doing. Right. Yeah. So I don't have to sell you because the buyers are so savvy nowadays. Yeah. They're going to go find out about you anyway, whether you tell them or not. So I let them or lead them to the water. So I use a line for everybody who's listening, right? Teach them how to fish and they'll learn you sell fishing poles. You don't have to. You don't have to sit there and say, you know, keep casting your net. No, I love the fish, man. This is the bait you use. This is what's going on. Uh, maybe use this tackle box. Use this dry ice when you put the fish in. So when you go fishing, shit, I want to go fish with Jared. Yeah, <laughs> that's a you pretty know? cool statement. That I like that. I'm gonna steal that. Please do, man. I stole it from somebody else, man. Shout out to um, um, uh, Gary. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna mess up his name, man. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I can't think of his name, but that's my yeah. brother, uh, Jerry Moran. There you go. Yeah. There we yeah. go, my man. Shout out to him. So, so what is what is your? Do you have a plan for your LinkedIn? What do you what do you want? What's your what's your? I know it's only LinkedIn, but yeah. What would you like to happen? And and what do you want to? What are you pushing into? Are you worried about the changes? Are you worried about, you know, algorithms? Are you worried about the growth and it getting saturated like Facebook? Are there any of those things worrying you? No. It may be, but that's why I'm on it right now. Because um, for those listening, LinkedIn is content efficient, and that's why the reach is what it is. So, out of 722 million users that are active, only two percent of people post. And like, I want people to really grasp that two percent of people post. So that means, imagine we're at a big party, right? Everybody's just standing in the bleachers. It's a school dance. And then you've got me and a couple other people. We're getting our groove on. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're like, oh, look at that. Look at the reach. I'm reaching this one. I'm reaching that one. And everybody's just watching us. Slowly, slowly over time, people are going to want to join the party. That looks fun. Yeah. That looks good. I, oh, man, that did that for your career? Absolutely. And that's what it's going to be. But I'm already planting my flag early. And what I want to do is inspire other sellers to get on the platform because I know it changed my life. So as far as what it's going to do, I have no expectations. I had no strategy. It was just me being myself. But the relationship that I've been able to forge and the way I've been able to put myself out there, man, I had offers from Google, Amazon, LinkedIn, all of the big tech companies. Right. But the reason why I didn't go there is because it's too much red tape and I couldn't be this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So every interview I had is like, can I be this? Can I do this? Can I can I bring the CMO of Gong on a, on a podcast without having to go through legal? You know what I mean? <laughs> can we can we just talk shop? And who we said, man, we want you for you. And then when I heard that, man, and and obviously, you know, and those other companies were, you know, offering a lot of money. I mm-hmm. came for the happiness, man. And it was probably one of the best decisions I made in my career today. So what I look forward to on LinkedIn is just I love the fact that I don't have an expectation and that anything can happen in any given day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Gary V could reach out. Like I'm actually working on getting Damon John on my podcast. I'm a, I'm a guy in the Bronx in a two bedroom apartment. And I'm about to get Damon John, the shark, on my podcast. That shit excites me. That's what I want to do, man, and build those relationships. That's where you don't have to be world famous, but you can build out your own sphere of influence and your own relationship. You don't have to be the influencer with a gazillion followers. 
you can occupy a space that's you're out of the noise but you don't have to you don't have to uh, leave the atmosphere either yeah that's it that's it man that's it and and I'll be honest I'll, I'll tell everybody who's listening to how I get people how I get my guests right it's from being active so that consistent thing so even if I get five likes you don't know who sees your post man you don't know yeah. who likes it they could like it and not actually like it yeah and I think there's so much man I, I'll tell you a quick story where um it was a VP and I ended up closing a deal with her. It was actually a two and a week, two and a half week sales cycle. She DMs me and says, Hey, Jared, I love your content. Um, you know, I've been following you for two years. This is my problem. Would you help me solve it? And it ended up being a 70K deal that I had zero effort on. It was just me planting my flag, building that trust, building that credibility. And it took a four month deal cycle to two and a half weeks to close. So mm-hmm. that's what you want. You want yeah. to be able to talk to these people. And, you know, it's a different story when, you know, Dean, you've been watching me for two years and you finally got me on the podcast. It's like, yo, man, JT, my man, I, I love your shit. I love what you're doing. And then we just have that synergy. So imagine having that on a sales call. Yeah. Imagine what kind of things you can get through a discovery call. They will give you the problem. You don't have to do a discovery. I was I was working with a company, a uh, stock market listed company, very kind of straight laced in the yeah, way yeah. they do sales. And I took, I said to them, give me a small group of your sales team. I'm going to work with them for three months. Uh And there, there, we did all of the stuff you're talking about on LinkedIn. We talked about random stuff. We, all the kind of stuff. And their competitor was mocking them and saying, obviously those salespeople have got nothing to do because they're wasting their time on LinkedIn. (laughs) We took a 2 million pound deal away from them by building a relationship, talking about music from the eighties. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God. That's incredible, man. Literally ripped a 2 million pound deal away from them. They'd had this for like five, six years and we pulled it from under them talking about music from the eighties. That's it. Cause that's what it's about. It's about the conversation, not the content and the yeah. content just drives the conversation. Right. And if you want to break through the noise, stop being a part of the noise. Stop. You see people doing polls. You see people doing marketing shit. You see gated content. I can't stand that stuff. Right. It's, like the Web 3.0 ever, and that's where we're shifting to right now. It's going to be about content community and how you create a better experience for your clients, right? And it's all about that experience. Like one, I'll tell you a quick story about how I got to a sales thing, but it's like random. She was a social media manager, right? Her last name happened to be Thomas, right? So I'm like, okay, you know what? What's up, Cuzzo? Where's the cookout? When can I come? You know, is Uncle Tom, he going he gonna to cook the thing? You know what I mean? And that's the conversation I led with. Next thing you know, we're in a two-hour conversation in the DM. But you know why it worked? Because nobody else reached out to her in that manner. Mm-hmm. I broke through the noise. Same thing with, if you have you heard of Dave Gerhardt? Mm, no. He, he's big on LinkedIn. So for those who don't know, he was the CMO of Drift. He has a, a, a huge following, over 150,000 followers, right? And he was one of the first people I used to follow when I started my journey. He's like who I mirrored for that thought leadership content. <clears throat> one day he posted three times. And on the third post, I'm like, holy crap, like... You're on fire today, right? So instead of me just saying, great post, and thank you for sharing these statistics, what I did was, man, you got that NBA jam net going on, man. You're on fire. You know what I mean? And then he responds back, man, I I feel like Sean Kemp today, man, back in the Sonics. And and we started talking about basketball in in the actual feed, man. So people are liking our comments and seeing us and wanting to jump in and trying to be fun with us and all that stuff. But it was like, that's what caught his attention. Mm-hmm. Not just being generic and thank you for sharing. This is super insightful. Like that's that's noise again, right? Mm-hmm. How are you going to stand out? And then what that led to is me reaching out to DM, asking him to be on the podcast and him saying, hell yeah. So do you think though, just to be, just to play devil's advocate, because LinkedIn's come mm-hmm. from, LinkedIn's come from CV website, professional, yeah. Thick, thick eyebrows, professors, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. It's come from there, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. sure. And it's now... Um, even I've seen some TikTok and Instagram people moving over because they realized how easy it is to build an audience on LinkedIn compared to the other channels. What, what would you do for the people who've come from a pre social media age or a LinkedIn website age and say, this feels all so uncomfortable the way it's going. How would you talk to them about the new world or as they see it, the new world? I would say jump in. Jump in, right? Because I come from that pre-social media world too. I remember when LinkedIn first started, man, I was cold DMing people. Hey, what's up, Mr. Klein? And I got this great new product. Would you talk to me at five o'clock? Left on red, never answered. Left on red, never answered. Left on red, never answered. Is that the experience that you want? 
No, man. You can you have an opportunity, anybody who's listening, to make to change your life and change your career by simply being your authentic self in these workplaces. If you looked at LinkedIn ads, if you ever seen the commercials, LinkedIn says specifically, you define what professionalism is. Mm-hmm. Professionalism isn't the button-up shirt anymore, man. It's mm-hmm. not the, you know, I'm gonna come through in my wingtip shoes with the slacks. Hey, who gives a shit, right? Because if I'm a top seller and I'm outselling the hell out of that person who's wearing the wingtips what what really matters right and that's what i care about so mm-hmm. that's why you be your authentic self be on facebook the reach is incredible right now you have opportunity to reach all of your contacts all of your companies that you're looking to target and you could create a real genuine relationship man and if you do that and scale it i promise you your life and your career will change like things are just easier for me i can ask people for things i can ask for a deal people mm-hmm. in my organization are like how do you get this one to come on a podcast no matter of fact let me connect the cmo and the cmo let's connect you two why aren't you talking you know mm-hmm. what i mean and if you could be that type of person your value is sky high so what what do you say to those sales people who are addicted to the dms and the cold outreach and they're just hitting people as i call it hit, hitting people up over the head or the seven paragraph sales pitch what do you say to them? Because like, have you ever done cold calling? Of course, of course. Yeah. There's something oddly productive. There's not, but it feels good to make lots and lots of calls. Yes. And then when you come on LinkedIn and you go, I've done a post and... <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yep, I know exactly what you mean. Or I've done, you know, I had this the other day. I said to him, if that's the one person you want right? And that person is worth potentially a million dollars to you. How much time are you prepared to spend on that million dollar person? That's, that is the key, right? And I think it deals with sellers out there who are doing this right now. So if you've got people in your cadence, you're doing cold emails, cold DMs, all that other stuff, right? The key is what research are you going to do in order to make that connection? Because one, you haven't earned their trust. Two, you don't know their specific problems. And three, they don't know you. So you can do something simple as connecting with them on LinkedIn. And I do not sell. I'm going to go to their last recent post. I'm going to see what they're talking about. I'm going to see where they're going. Did they have that medium steak last night? Rare. Did they, you know, all of those things that I'm going to do. And I'm going to incorporate that into my messaging. And I might not even sell. I, I haven't earned the right to sell. So if I DM you, man, I saw your post last night about the medium steak rare, man. I love going to Benjamin Steakhouse out here, man. You should really check it out. Hey, thanks, Jared. I think that was really cool, man. Love your content, by the way. Keep going. Oh, man, thank you. I love your stuff, too. Hey, by the way, do you know you know what I do yeah. or whatever? whatever. And, and then when you get to that point, you can make yeah. the ask. You have to earn that shit. I was, I was talking to people about, well, once you're connected, you know, you're connected on LinkedIn. They're seeing a bit of your content. So you're educating them a bit about who you are, what you're about on the content. Yeah. And then if you're choosing to interact with them, right, you're building this kind of tether. It's not quite the same as, yeah. you know, we're getting on quite well here, but I get what I guess when we meet in person, there'd be a bit of kind of awkwardness because it's not the same. It's a different virtual relationship. It's the same on LinkedIn. You have a different sure. kind of relationship. For sure. But then that tether builds up and it might be a quite weak at the beginning, but we found that if you've interacted with somebody five, six, seven times, they've seen some of your content. Actually, you can just drop them a line and say, Hey, I was thinking about what you're up to at Xco. Can we have a chat? That's and it. it could be that low key. That's it. It could be, man. Cause nobody wants to read. People don't want to be sold. They want to be told. Mm. Right. So if you're not educating your buyer enough, and if you have to put a, a 10 page paragraph in a DM, nobody's going to care. Nobody wants to care. Nobody wants to read that, right? Um, I interviewed the CMO of Gong. He said something crazy, and it just goes so back to content strategy and marketing. He said the way he started up the business and he thought about the marketing strategy, the CEO had a picture on the wall with a map, and it said on the map, population 8 billion, welcome to nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think about that, right, Dean? That's incredible because, right, why should I care about you, right? Because I have my own KPIs. I have to hit my numbers. You're just Mr. Salesperson who has commission breath trying to get budget out of me. And I don't know if you have my best interests at heart. How do you combat those things as a salesman? Content, relationship, you build the trust. Support other people, even if it doesn't lead to a deal. I can't tell you how many times that I just connected with somebody. We had a conversation. And then a year later, they'll come back. Hey, man, now is the time. Oh, hey, man, uh, do you, you want to work here? We got some open opportunities here. Do you want to do this? And that's what it's about. 
separate mm-hmm. yourself, right? Because you can do all those cold stuff, cold emails. You might get one, but what about the hundred that said no to you? And it's interesting because then you think about it of that changes your career as a salesperson because you're almost an influencer, not the same word. Inf- I hate yeah, word. You know, I hate it. Yeah, me too. But the salesperson of the future is somebody who has a network. It's like old school, actually. Yeah, that's it's always been like that. It's old school. You'd hire somebody because they were connected. That's it. That was the back back in the day when I first got into sales. It was who you knew, right? So when I was doing display ads for three years in a company and I'm going to Con Lions, it was who have you sold to? What relationship do you have? Really? You sold you sold uh, MGM brand. Can you bring them to Can? You know, can you bring yeah. them to that? And that's what it's about. And it's the same thing, but it's just on your digital network. So in five, two years from now, I guarantee you guys, it ain't going to be a resume. Your LinkedIn is going to be your resume. Yeah. They're going to want to see what you're posting about, who you're connected to, what kind of reach you have, and that's going to increase your value. So now imagine if I can go into an organization, right, and say, hey, I generated a million free organic views. And out of those a million organic free views, I'm bringing back 5 to 10% of that traffic back to the website. Mm-hmm. You would have paid X amount of dollars for that to get paid. But yeah. I'm bringing you a more engaged consumer. Now, what does that cost? And how much should I get paid for it? <laughs> you know what I mean? This is where we're going. This is the web 3.0 era. But, but do you think this is now where actually the the division between a salesperson and a marketer is kind of going, it's blurring massively? You, you, you should be both. You have to wear both hats. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a successful person that socially sells, you need to know marketing. And if you do marketing really well, you're going to get more sales. This is why we do it at the global organization level. But if you can do it as your own, because if you think about 2022, we are all our own digital media agencies. We all have phones. We all have access to illustrators, Adobe's, all that other stuff, right? We are. We have to be a content machine. And that's how you build up your audience, build your community, and drive more value for yourself and the organization. And that's how you drive up your price, your salary, your all that stuff. And that's how you you get to some sort of win and, and some sort of fulfillment out of this. Awesome. I feel like we could go on for like forever. For real, man. This is a great conversation. We, sh- we should do we should do a part two because we got to wrap up because this this is one of my record long. Yeah, I, I try and do them like 20 minutes, but I think yeah, it's yeah. quite a bit longer than that. But um, Jarrett, you're up for people coming, finding you on LinkedIn and connecting with that's- you and saying, giving you feedback, asking you questions, right? I do it all day, man. So please, uh, it's Jared Thomas on LinkedIn. DM me. I might have one of the quickest response times of anybody <laughs> in my network, man. I, if you hit me up, I respond. I give my number out. I talk. I don't bite. You know, just let me know because I just want to help people genuinely because it changed my career. I was in a yeah. weird place. Um, and now the world is kind of my oyster. I can do anything I want, man. And I feel like I'm, I'm in a great space. So mm-hmm. I want to see other people have that feeling, especially the, sellers. Since we fail so much. And the thing I love about what you've just said is you're open to people because somebody you can't sell to might have such a great experience with you that they go, Hey, let me, let me introduce you to somebody. That's it. And and so often we go, they're not my target audience. They're not the decision maker. I'm ignoring you. Yes. Throw that out of your head, guys. Throw that Mm -hmm. out of your head. Relationships are the new currency in your in your yeah. position. Relationships uh, are the new currency. I had a lady. I'll um, I'll wrap up with this because this is exactly what you're saying. Yeah. I had a lady who messaged me today, and she said, "I saw you were talking in one of your videos on LinkedIn about you wanted to work with this company." Uh huh. She said, "I'm the exec. One of the ex- uh, it's a little project for me, but I'm a coach to one of their senior leaders. Would you uh-huh. like an introduction?" I was like, "Hell yeah!" Yeah. <laughs> All because I was just talking. I didn't even realize I'd said it on a video publicly, but it, you just don't know. But that person, I can't sell what I want to sell to this company, to that lady. And if I was so narrow minded about that, I would have dismissed and, and ignored her, not connected with her or whatever, and missed an opportunity. That's it, man. Everything, man. Treat everybody the same. I don't care where you're from, man. I've had people reach out from Germany, Russia, Atlanta, Chicago, LA, you name it, man. Like, I love your stuff. Can you help me? And like you said, they've introduced me to, and put me in rooms that I wouldn't have been necessarily. Mm-hmm. So one, one last question for you, Jared. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm sure because you're proactive on LinkedIn, your DMs must be crazy, right? It's insane right now. Yeah. <laughs> 
how do you because the the LinkedIn inbox can be a bit clunky it can be a bit difficult to manage because you open it and it shows automatically as red you can miss stuff right yeah how do you manage that given um you got so many DMs yeah I, I'll be honest with you I have a desktop LinkedIn LinkedIn tab open at all times so if I get the ping I'm already on it <laughs> it already opens up and I'm just doing it right then and there ping another one you know what I mean or I might get to it later that day but I at least take I I have to in my heart I have to answer within 24 hours there's yeah. not one person that's left on red in my in my inbox and there's never and one person that can say they got an automated message from me I hate it hmm. You're going to reach out to me. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I think you took time out to think of me. So I'm going to give you that same respect back and you're going to get the real me. That's awesome. Jarrett, this has been an absolute. Likewise. Been... brother. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this um, is. Thank you so much for coming on. I'd love to have you on again. Um, and, you know, check out Hootsuite. I actually use Hootsuite. So there you go. Shout um, out to you, Dean. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> This podcast was sponsored by Hootsuite. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> uh, no, just that was, a joke, that was a joke, by the way, everybody. That was a joke. You might be able to make it happen. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Jarrett, no, this was awesome. Thank you so much. And guys, go find Jarrett on LinkedIn. Keep him busy in his inbox as well. Thank you again, Dean. This was an honor. It was a pleasure, brother. I'm going to send you my number, man. Let's tap in. And anything you need, man, I'm always here. Awesome. All right, brother. Take it easy. Thank you, guys. Cool. Bye-bye.